Welcome to the Skill Work Forum again. Uh, I'm Tim, joined with my partner, Brett. We gather at each one of these episodes and talk about trends and issues and concerns and challenges all surrounding the skill trades. This is actually part two of a two-part series where we are looking into our crystal ball about trends that we see emerging that will impact you, your business, and skilled tradesmen across all sectors in the coming year. Um, So just by way of recap, last episode, uh, we took a look at the first of eight trends that we're going to emphasize here in this uh, two-part series. So of those eight, the first four were the, the fact that skilled labor shortage is going to increase, and Brett talked at length about that. No surprise, but it's just going to be accelerated. And actually, several of the topics surrounded the factors that are going to contribute to that. The second one was the baby boomer exodus that actually has been accelerated. Many of us know about that, but it's going to continue to be both a brain and, more importantly, an experience drain to your company in the coming year. The third one we covered was Workplace flexibility, the need to become very creative in your workplace to retain and keep those skilled tradesmen that are going to be so crucial to your success. The fourth one was um, the replacement worker, the concept of replacement workers. And uh, that is a it's not a new concept, but it's becoming more of a reality in your space. So we if you didn't take a look at that one, we encourage you to go back and take a look at that one before we get into the, the next um, topics today, which will be the four we'll cover today, automation of the workplace. We did a whole podcast on the fourth industrial revolution. We'll talk about how that's going to continue and, matter of fact, be accelerated. And then, as we currently set, this rising cost and inflation fears, inflationary pressures on your business and specifically on the skilled trades. Uh, the the Fourth, I'm sorry, the third thing we'll cover today is the supply chain backlog that we're currently facing and how that's going to couple with growing consumer demand, how that's going to put increasing pressures on the skilled trades. And finally, this infrastructure spending bill that's on our horizon. So with that, Brett, um, let's talk a little bit and just recap where we where we went with the Fourth Industrial Revolution, where we see that going next year. Yeah, no, for sure. So like Tim said, we did a did a episode on that um, a while back on the fourth industrial revolution, um, but I think it's more relevant now as we look at at trends forward. You know, I, I get out into quite a few of the facilities of our clients, and um, I was in a facility earlier this week actually, and and the reality of this automation is here. I mean, it it is happening, and you know, a lot of things happen. You know, it, it in people will uh, when the pain point becomes high enough, then people will will start to spend the money. Automation, this for the revolution. The only there was two holdbacks. One, you had to have the technology that could support it. We now have that now with right. the cloud and the Internet of Things and all these types of of systems that allow uh, this. Uh, you know, in concept, basically, in a manufacturing facility for equipment through HMI systems, you know, Wonderware is a very popular one and those kind of things to to talk to each other and for maintenance to become more uh, proactive than reactive. You know, we've, we were for ever, you know, we basically reacted to equipment as it broke down. Right. We're, we're going to start to see that. But I think the the before you looked at it from a standpoint of do I want to spend these, in most cases, millions of dollars to to put this automation in place because there's a savings involved? Now I think it's changed, and the reason why I think it's even more relevant and we're going to see it, it, it accelerate is now it's happening because they can't find the front-end workers. And so, so they're now... They, If you're going to run your plan, I mean, I'm talking to plants all the time. They're saying they are consistently 20 percent. Their workforce is is they're they're 20 percent short. Well, you you can't manage 20 percent. You can't run your facility at full go at those kind of numbers. So the automation, you know, becomes almost a must. And and like I said, I was in a facility, I was in one a couple weeks ago, I was in one, and this is a company, it's a well-known, very large um, 
company that has the resources to be able to spend the money and their level of automation i mean you're talking about high high volume lines running a variety of products and there is literally an operator and a couple people on these lines you know because it's all robotic and it's all conveyor systems and it's all now the pressure is which we'll talk about and we can i'll throw it back over to you is then what does that mean to the skilled trades yeah it's a, it's a boom for them yeah so <clears throat> In solving one issue, it's kind of like the oh, put a finger in the in the hole in the dike over here, and another hole pops out yep. here. So, the the real need was frontline production workers. We we can't find enough of them. We have to automate our production lines. Great, you know we've addressed that problem to some degree. The challenge then is that all that equipment, you know, it it, do, it doesn't run perpetually and without issue, or you it, it, you you constantly have to adjust, to change, to fix, to maintain, uh, to deploy. And that means you're still going to require those skilled craftsmen to be able to probably more so than ever to keep those lines running. So in the past, you just do more workers at the problem. And that's not the case today. So greater technology drives higher skills, higher wages, and fewer candidates out there. So in solving one problem, uh, which is great, you had to do something, and that's a great way to solve it, but you've, you've introduced another one, and that's kind of where the fourth industrial revolution is a, from a business, you have to embrace it, but it's going to, it's going to bring on other challenges, in, and this is the kind of, the, I think, the point. Mm -hmm. No, and I, th and I think that, you know, for, uh, for, the, for companies and for uh, skilled trades guys or gals today, and I know, you know, both, both, groups watch this podcast and so you know for if you're a if you're currently a mechanic or you're currently uh, an electromech or a, you know you know in those roles if you're in those roles you know what i'm talking about and uh and so the opportunity right now to 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 upskill and to to get yourself trained in PLCs and and HMI systems and this this broader technology of automation automation we have more demand right now in 2021 I think it'll just continue in 2022 more and more companies coming to us looking for that higher skill level the it's the, like you said, Tim, it's it's you create this automation. I had a well-known gentleman. I won't use his name today because I didn't ask him permission. Um, um, but he was a president of, of of a very large food company. And a couple years ago, he he basically predicted this to me that that companies. He was talking about his specifically. He's now retired, but. You know uh, that we're going to spend millions and millions of dollars because we have to on automation. But if we can't find the automation technicians and the skilled guys to keep this equipment running, we're it's going to be a big problem. Yeah, and it, and we're seeing it. And so this idea of upskilling that that Brad introduced, I mean, it's it's different than retraining. And a lot of things traditionally are like I'm going to take a uh, you know a plumber and train them to be a you know, a solar energy mechanic. That, that's not upskilling is taking somebody who's in like an electrician mm -hmm. and I'm going to take those basic skills that they understand and I'm going to take them to a higher level. Yep. So that's that's what upskilling is. And that's for the skill worker out there, it's an opportunity for you and you ought to absolutely be looking at every opportunity for that. For the business owner, the, the person who's out there trying to keep staff up and running, you need to be looking for opportunities to upskill your uh, current employees that have aptitude. That's why a big part of what we do is we we test people for their mechanical aptitude. Yep. If you have an aptitude, you'd be looking at upskilling those people to replace some of those workers we talked about in the previous episode. Give your give your uh, skilled employees the opportunity to get those greater skills. Uh, partner with local trade schools. There's a lot of opportunity to do that. So. Upskilling is crucial, and it's going to be crucial to meeting the demand of this automated world that we live in. This electronic ecosystem. Yep. Out there. No, no doubt about it. As like you said, it's it's you know we're at, at skill work. You know, one of the things that we're one of our big initiatives, you know, over the next couple of years is is to certify 
um, put certification programs, and we're working with different programs to where where we're gonna we want to be able to provide that to our guys because we know the demand for them is going to be off the charts. Yeah. So you know we want to be able to provide that resource. We also want to be able to provide that opportunity to skill workers to be able to get that. You know, it's 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 more than just. Uh, having the the book knowledge, it's really you know they call it you know cognitive learning is really if we could teach all of kids to 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 be able to learn situationally and to be able to in a facility if you're somebody running a manufacturing facility you know the the people that are in huge demand right now are ones with manufacturing experience, high level of automation, and the ability to troubleshoot. Yep. Well, that's all situational cognitive learning, you know, to be able to, I'm in this situation. I mean, you know, you, in your background, Tim, with, with the military, I mean, you guys, everything was, you know, what ha, what do we do if, if this and right. then this? And so. Yeah, for sure. It's a, it's a key thing. So, uh, you know, the idea that you have to, you you can learn to think that way, yeah. yep. and it, it's, cr- it's going to be crucial to be thinking about what people do you have on out out there in your at your company, whether it be construction, manufacturing, whatever it is, that have the skill, that have the talent. You should be looking every opportunity now to invest in up giving them opportunity to upskill. So it's going to be a big deal. We think it's going to be a growing deal, and those companies that are doing it, that are planning for it, that are investing in that. Are going to have going to be ahead of the curve, no yeah. doubt about it. So, just to put a uh, you know final exclamation point on this, just a st- statistic, McKinsey study talked about to, to underpin your comment earlier, Brett, that this automation could eliminate 73 million U.S. jobs. Those are not the skilled technicians that keep things running. Those are the you know the the frontline production workers. That's what they're looking to replace, not because they want to put people out of a job. That they can't find those workers. Mm-hmm. So if you have people out there working the production line right now, and they have some aptitude, and they show you know they they they, they have some uh, capability, look for opportunity to upskill them. So rather than let them right. go. Yeah, you can kind of read that study just to to kind of jump on that a little bit. You can read that that study. A couple of different ways, you know. McKinsey's obviously well respected; they do tons of this kind of work. In in that one, the seventy three million is a little bit scary, to be quite honest. You know, in that where are those people going to find work, and 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 how many of them can you upskill, and that kind of thing? Obviously, we would we would hope that be the case. But the other piece too, if, if McKinsey is even a little bit right in their study, and chances are they are, they're pretty bought in that this automation is coming now. Yeah. And so, 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 so that level of, of automation should tell us as, as companies, we need to get ahead of, of how we're going to do that. We're seeing it now. We're seeing companies who have done it, and now they're chasing, you know, using companies like us and other resources um, internally that they have to find the, these level of, uh, of, of technicians. So. Yeah. So... It's a big deal. Fourth Industrial Revolution, a lot of impacts to you, and it's happening right now. So the next thing, this is kind of current, more economic, but it's going to drive a lot of your business in a lot of different ways. So it's no secret that in inflation, rising costs, that's happening right now. Uh, I just filled up, uh, you know, with my wife last night, I filled up her vehicle, and uh, I was like, wow. I mean, the cost to just fill up your tank, it's 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 almost doubled inside of 18 months. It's incredible. And gas and food prices are continuing to go up. So food prices, specifically in the U.S., have been on the rise for six straight months. So I know a lot of people out there, you know, try to tell you, you don't pay no attention. It's all fine. Well, we know anybody that has to go to a grocery store, fill up your gas, or buy raw materials, costs are on the rise. U.S. consumer prices hit their largest annual increase since 2008, over the past six months. And particularly oil and food category is driving the largest price hike. So, you know, I, we know this is going on. So what's the obvious so what to us is costs go up, right, and inflation. you got to pass those on. you got to figure out a strategy for doing that. But how does it specifically impact the skill trades and, and your challenges with that? So... Just pull the thread on that a little bit, just to make sure that you, that we understand cause and effect here. 
and you know, I don't mean to speak down to people who are economists, but I had to get this clear in my mind. So higher inflation means that the real wages for workers decrease. In other words, they have less purchasing power. So higher cost means the $24 an hour guy, I cannot buy as many groceries, bread, fuel as I did a year ago. I can, I can buy, my money goes not as far. So that's, that's a real impact. So then workers need higher wage to increase their purchasing power. I need to make more to be able to purchase what I purchased a year ago. And most of us expect our, you know, our quality of life and living to continue to go up. So you take that into account, plus the fact that my, the money I'm making now doesn't go as far. I need a higher wage. Everything that we talked about with the demand for skilled tradesmen, the fact that they are in higher demand, that they're, that's going to drive their need and their impetus, motivation, to take another opportunity that's giving them more money. Mm-hmm. So inflation and cost are going to absolutely exacerbate your skill trade issue in this way. Uh, you're going to have to pay higher wages to keep those people because of this tremendous policies that we have in place right now that are driving these economic issues that we're facing. And that's as close to editorializing as I know. <laughs> so, um, so what does that mean? You're going to have rising labor costs to keep em- employees. In addition to all the other things that are driving your, your higher labor costs. So what happens? Brett, you've ran businesses. Your labor costs go up and up and up. Uh, I either have to pass them on or my profits are decreasing because labor costs are eating away at that. So what do I do? I'm going to, well, do I let workers go? That's traditionally what you do. I've got to shut down some lines. I can't keep up with it. And the consumer demand is going to continue. So you can see where this is going to drive continuing cost and continuing challenges for the labor market. So... No, I think you're, you're you're spot on, Tim, and and we're going to kind of this ne- the next point is going to be supply chain, but and and this kind of feeds into that. But if you go back and and in the in the part one of this 2022 trend series, a lot of what Tim just referred to in this is. There was two things in the previous one that we talked about. One was the the golden age of, of the skilled trades, which means you're in demand. Wages are up. You, you can get more money. And then this other concept of replacement. So you, com- you combine all of those things that I need more money to buy the same stuff. My opportunity is out there. And, and guys and gals are willing to move. So, so all of this dynamic, you know, you know, you already had it, and then you throw inflation in to where a person is is autom- is just going to be more inclined to to go somewhere for a couple more bucks an hour, or yeah. or maybe more, and type thing. So as as employers, you know, we have to be, you know, we have to be obviously very conscious of of that and our workforce and maintaining our talent as. As skill workers, as employees, you know, obviously, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, we always hear we do annually. A lot of companies do. Uh, they take a look at, you know, strengths, their weaknesses, things they need to fix, opportunities and threats. Yep. So threats are things that you don't control. They're outside forces. This is a threat. Some of these other things are opportunities. A threat is something that's being basically you have to deal with. It's coming in from external and certainly um, economic pressures, and particularly policy that's driving the economic pressures. There's there's no explanation for why we should be heading into inflationary waters with everything else in the economy other than policy. So it's coming and it's it's already upon us. So we just want to make sure that you're including that. In this potpourri of beautiful things that are going to drive some of your challenges in the coming year. But we, we thrive on challenges. Every challenge brings an opportunity, as this one will. So, Brett, you talked about um, this idea of inflation. It's going to lead us into challenges. And you mentioned the supply chain backlog. Yeah, well, on top of, you know, we're, we're you know, we're coming out of, of COVID or 
we have this continuation of COVID, however you want to look at it, is, and that has created a lot of, of, of challenges in the workforce, and, and you've got facilities that have been running hard now for two years trying to keep up with supply, labor's down, now you have inflation costs, and all these types of things. And so this, this supply chain idea, you know, kind of post-COVID, is the demand on these facilities. You know, kind of specifically here talking manufacturing in a minute here, we're going to talk about infrastructure, which will have more of an impact in the construction space. But in this particular space, you know, um, in the manufacturing, just the demand on these facilities is is off the charts. And and so you need you need to be running more, you need to be running more efficient, you need you need all of these things. You don't just snap your finger and create the automation that we talked about in the fourth industrial. So, you know, I think uh, the, the, the current administration indicated that, you know, it's gonna get, you know, worse before it gets better. I don't know if that's very encouraging, but um, but it is probably a reality and, and you know, you know, as as you know, we often talk about, you know, you know, self awareness and reality. You know, you know, as business leaders, you know, you've got to really look at what are the challenges, and and inside of those challenges, what are the opportunities? Um, and so we're seeing it kind of all over. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we're seeing it acutely in like the offloading of cargo ships, a lot of skilled tradesmen you know, uh, longshoremen, et cetera, that, that do that work. There's a shortage of labor there. And truck drivers. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, there's 100,000 right now, 100,000 by some estimates. I've heard 80, I've heard 100. Shortage currently in truck drivers. And that number is going to just, just continue to skyrocket, actually, because the fact that we talked earlier about the baby boomers. Trucking industry is probably one of the most um heavily populated by 55 plus Mm -hmm. and so uh and you throw in some of the policies that are being put in place and the additional burden on truckers and the trucking industry and some of the demands for some of the covid policies you could you could see this be you know again we're, we're some of this some of this information seems to be doom and gloom but we believe that america always shines the brightest when Things are difficult, so there's going to be a lot of opportunity for innovation and thought leaders to bring us out of this. So we, we look at these things as being, yeah, they're challenges, but as leaders, you know, we don't shy away from challenges and we don't ignore them. We take them on and we look for them to be opportunities. So there is going to be a, a lot of impact. We've got some other, you know, quotes here from some industry leaders about what they're seeing. People live in the supply chain world every day. Yeah, no, it's it's across the board. I mean, you know, whether it's it's whether it's delivery services, you know, UPS, FedEx, you know, the, those types of Amazon, obviously, you know, the demand on their 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 uh, to find drivers, to find warehouse workers, to um, the the demand for what they're doing is is going up. The labor is a challenge. You know, like you said, I think there will be. We're seeing it. There, there's somewhere in the middle as, as these things meet, you know, people will create, Americans will create solutions and automation and, and those kind of things. But I think it is a is a reality. I don't know how we, I don't know, I don't see a solution to where in somewhere in 2022 you find 100,000 truck drivers. And and so, so there's going to have to be other other solutions to that and 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 at the same time we probably are going to deal with some some pain points along the way well the and the the consumer demand is at a record high as well and a lot of that has been fueled by a a lot of uh dollars that that have come into people unexpected dollars that come to people with administration trying to help people out but a lot of money has flowed in and people are spending and and here as we record this we're heading into christmas season and I'm just going to be interested in seeing how the supply uh, this Christmas season is going to be impacted and what effect that's going to have on other sectors of our economy. But just a, a, this just yesterday, Brett, I was sharing with you, I talked to a, a business owner 
His company has been in his family since 1908. They've been operating since 1908. Very successful company that's here in, in, in Omaha where we're located. And he said that uh, he's been running the company since uh, early 80s. And before that, his father and his grandfather. And he said he has never in, in his history, and, in, and he's been running the company since the early 80s, he's never seen a supply chain like this ever. And he said he's seen already in the last six months He's seen across all of his suppliers a 40% increase in his cost of raw materials. Uh, he says he usually sees anywhere from 3 to 4% a mm -hmm. year. 40%, and that's all being passed on to his customers. So far, everybody is okay with that, uh, except for one, one of his customers he mentioned. But he, he shared a, another ex, uh, example with me of a supply chain issue that there's a, a colleague he has that needs a, uh, an engine for a very specific piece of equipment crucial to their business. They have to get it repaired or replaced. And the supplier for this engine overseas said, no problem, we'll take your order, we'll put you in the queue, we'll have it to you. The estimated delivery time is six years to get that part. <laughs> I mean... Another guy in that conversation shared that I was trying to get a gallon of paint that I needed, and I had it had to be special ordered, and had to be had, we had to go to Albuquerque, New Mexico, to get this gallon of paint because it just wasn't there. So supply chain again, how does it affect your the skill trades? Well, it's everything that slows down and increasing demand. Slow down raw materials. That's gonna, you know, it's gonna put more pressure on you. I mean, it's easy to put two and two together on how it's gonna. No, affect yeah. I mean, I think you know, companies, you know, all the more reason why you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to run more efficiently um, to get out, you know, what you need because you know you're just there's just so many other pressures on the ability to either get the supplies, obviously it's gonna, costs are gonna be higher, these things. Some places it'll get absorbed, you know, some places it'll get pushed along, you know, type thing. But for a lot of these companies, you know, how you're gonna maximize, meet your goals, hit your AOP, all those kinds of things, you know, you're gonna have to be very, very efficient in, in what you do, which puts a lot of emphasis on on how are you running, you know, how are you keeping things going, you know, and, and that kind of thing. We, we talk to companies all the time. I mean, it's a big, big emphasis right now about runtime and efficiencies and those kind of things, which really falls back on, on those, uh, you know, those skilled trade uh, individuals in the facilities. Yeah, and, you know, you and I came up in a time when just in time, Mm -hmm. You know, uh, manufacturing processes and construct everything, supply chain, just in time. Meaning you don't want to keep a lot of raw material on hand. You don't want to keep a lot of inventory. Because our supply chain had gotten so fine-tuned and we had all this offshore supply, you could literally ask for the raw materials that you need to deliver your product when you needed them. Well, now if you've got a lag in that, I mean, this could change the whole paradigm on how you... Mm -hmm how you uh, plan for and deliver and schedule, you know, th those products out the, at the other end of the facility. So it's a lot to think about, but that one supply chain is, is uh, the seventh thing that we see as a big impact. The final one is this infrastructure bill that was recently passed. Um, they call it an infrastructure bill because there is some spending uh, for infrastructure in there. There's a lot of other things as well, but, there is an infrastructure spending. So the idea that some of the folks that make a living in Washington, you know, they, they labor under an illusion that they sign a bill and all of a sudden the spigot's going to come on and there's going to be, you know, uh, shovel-ready projects ready to roll tomorrow. Well, you, in the especially in construction space, understand that that doesn't happen like that. And just providing a increase in demand and funds for those projects doesn't mean they're going to happen overnight. So this bill was being touted as generating new opportunities, new jobs, new bridges, airports, that sort of thing, highways. It could generate jobs in construction, transportation, and energy. But if there's currently not enough labor to do the projects that you have now, what happens when you get twice the demand for those projects that, that come in your front door? You know, so it's it's a good thing 
but it's also going to be a challenge to, to yeah. be able to meet the demand of that. Yeah, I mean, it's been a challenge. You know, the I mean, if you talk to people in the construction space, whether it's, like you said, roads or, or, or buildings or, or whatever, I mean, the, the labor shortage for skills in that space has been an issue for, for several years. I mean, it's been the number one concern. You know, if you're the leading a you know, general contracting construction company or a home building or, or whatever the case may be, on what scale, I mean, that's been their number one issue for several years. And so now you, you put this in place with the idea that we're, we have this demand to get all this stuff done, but the reality of where you're going to find that talent um, to be able to execute those plans to, to do those things. There's going to be a real challenge. I don't, I don't know. Again, it's, it's like everything we're saying. You, you're going to have to, as, as, as business owners and, and, you know, supervisors of companies and whatnot, I mean, you're going to have to really, really think outside the box as to how you're going to attract the talent, how you're going to keep the talent, how you're going to train the talent, um, but it, it, I, it, hopefully, inside of some of these things, like, like Tim said, that maybe maybe sound a little a little doomish. Um, it really, in the in the from a skilled trade perspective, I think the piece that we're trying to emphasize is that these are realities. These are things that are real, and so it's not a matter of you know go sit in the corner and and, and whimper. It's like, what am I going to do as a business owner? What am I going to do? Let, the, let your competitors sit in the corner and whimper. You know, you got to figure out how am I going to go? How am I going to be successful um, in this environment? And the opportunity is going to be off the charts if you can find find the talent. Yeah, the work is, is it used to be, in, you know, it used to be your challenge. Hey, I got to get more work. I got to get more projects. Now it's how am I going to be able to, to meet the, the needs that I, most people are backed up that are in the construction business, that projects aren't even, you know, from home building all the way to you know, bridges, they're getting pushed to the right because not only of skilled trades, but we therefore mentioned supply chain issues, mm-hmm. getting the supplies you need. So here's a story from, you know, we're, we're, gonna say we're, we're home-based in Omaha, Nebraska, here in the great Midwest. It's a story uh, from, a, I think, an MSNBC report, um, but it was just down the road here from Lincoln. So... Uh, and if I mem- mispronounce this gentleman's name, it's uh, Nicholas Kadavi or Kadavi, K-A-D-A-V-Y. Um, so Nicholas owns a masonry, a bricklaying company right down the road in Lincoln, Nebraska. Third generation mason who owns this company. So this is currently before the infrastructure bill. He's seen his workload triple since April of this past year. He said his company has already scheduled out work until June of 2022. So he can't even start a new project till July of next year. He wants to hire more skilled masons to finish the project sooner, but he can't find enough people to fill the dozen positions he has open, um, and even though he's willing to pay, quote, up to $50 an hour, twice what he offered before the pandemic. From twenty-five dollars to fifty dollars an hour now, he's not taking that. That cost is being. Oh, you want some bricklaying yeah. in your house? <laughs> Price it was a thousand dollars. Now it's twenty-five hundred. Uh, so that's getting passed on. That's going to, you know, again, all the other things we talked about. But so he's doing traditional out there, traditional hiring. He's putting ads out there, and he's not finding guys. That's where the creative business owner looks for other opportunities, like. A company like Skillwork, and we don't do these podcasts to sell what we do necessarily, but we do say we're in this with you, and we do have alternative ways that we can help augment your working crews to help get you over this hump or to address some of your challenges or allow you to take um, this opportunity, take advantage of the opportunities that come before you. So, getting creative includes non-traditional ways of hiring and adding staff, which a company like Skillwork can help you do. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's it's more so than ever. I mean, our our opportunities, um, like uh, Mr. Kadavi's, you know, have, have, have been, have grown a lot as well. And so, um, and I think it's those companies that are recognizing, you know, we've, 
we need all hands on deck. We, we've got to figure out how to do this. You can't just sit back and, and uh, you know, hoping it goes away is, is really not a plan. Um, it's not going away. Um, I think if there's anything that we see in these 2022 trends is from a variety of different things. It's, it's the, the pressure to find, to find the skilled talent is, 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 even, is just going to increase for all of these reasons. And, and so I don't think it's much of a stretch for anybody that's watching this to, to know that this is the reality. And so now it's, it's dealing with that reality. So. Yeah. So, um, again, we appreciate you taking the time to listen to this. As always, you can reach out to us at Skillwork. Um, we, we'd love to talk to you. Maybe we can help you with your problem or, you know, we're, we're just happy to, uh, to share any ideas that we can. Uh, always willing to reach out and collaborate. But just to recap these eight trends that we've talked about here over these two episodes, and uh, many of them are interrelated, but, but yet they have their own contributing factors and own mitigation steps that you need to take. So skilled labor shortage, that's going to continue to increase. The baby boomer exodus is going to become more acute. The experience and brain drain is a real thing that's going to be accelerated. There's going to be a growing demand for you for workplace flexibility to be creative and to provide an environment for taking advantage of a shrinking labor pool. So you're going to have to get creative in traditional ways of thinking about staffing and managing your, your workforce. I think you're, you're going to find that that's going to be non-productive going forward. If you think about other, other things, we talked about this idea of replacement in addition to attrition and company growth as, as a huge driver for the need for skilled workers. Automation, the fourth industrial revolution, that's going to continue to grow. Your need to be able to bring in higher skilled <clears throat> workers. And we talked about upskilling your employees to be able to, to fill that gap. Inflation, cost. The cost associated with that for your labor, and you know that's a real thing. We're experiencing it right now. Brett talked a lot about the supply chain backlog, the impacts of that. We're seeing it across every facet of our everyday life. And finally, this infrastructure spending and how that's going to affect primarily construction, but really everything across the board. Um, so those are the eight that we see coming next year. And uh, again, opportunity, really. Yeah, no, they are. I mean, it's we have to look at it. And so as, as business leaders, like I said, every every challenge, you know, we, you know, our company skill work exists because we recognized um, uh, a problem. You know, we recognize a challenge. You know, I, I learned a long time ago, you know, uh, don't build a business around a problem people don't know they have. And so, you know, if, if people recognize this is a problem. We need a solution. Hey, you know, there may be a business or there may be something you can build off of. And, yeah. and, and that's what we see. So. Absolutely. So I think Benjamin Franklin said uh, necessity is a motherhood or the mother of invention. Mother I think. Of invention. So, yeah. So we have a lot of necessities <laughs> pressing against you. So, again, we hope this gives you some food for thought as you start doing your planning for 2022 and wish you nothing but great success in the coming year. It's going to be a tons of opportunity. Really, it is. Uh, for those that are willing and, and able and are forward thinking, it's going to be a great 2022 year. We certainly expect it to be for us. We hope it is for you, too. So I just want to just I pray God's blessings on you and your company. Thank you for joining us today on the Skillwork Forum.